a little bit better, you'll know, um, of my involvement, you know, with Echo Base Media, an autograph signings company that mostly specializes in Star Wars autographs, so, you know, I've also got some autographs from them to show you as well as the London Film and Comic Con haul video, so, you know, it's going to be a lot to show in this video, that's for sure, as far as the haul goes, um, you know, because it's pretty crazy, like, haven't been to a convention since October before at London Film and Comic Con and, you know, got pretty good haul there, and then, you know, I actually returned, I didn't even know of it until I got home and saw it, I had a package from David from Echo Base Media as well, so it's quite a lot to go through, but, um, before we start with the autographs, because there is a lot of those, I do want to start with the, um, two figures I got, I only was initially intending to purchase one, and that would only be if anyone actually had this figure, um, and that figure is the Star Wars Black Series Clone Commander Wolf figure, uh, most of you who know me know that Commander Wolf is my favorite clone trooper, so naturally I had been, you know, f trying to find ways to um, pick up the figure. And, um, you know, one of my friends, Paul, who runs Order 66 Toy Store, a bit of a shout out there, um, had the figure for just £12. And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll sacrifice one autograph because, you know, I've just got to have the Wolf figure. Uh, this. Wolf figure being like a live action representation of his desert armor look from the last missions. So, very happy to have another wolf figure in my collection. I initially, as I said, was just going to get one figure, but I actually found out on the last day of the event, after I'd bought all of the autographs I really intended to, I found out I actually had some money left, so I was like, yeah, I should probably just get another figure, you know? Um, you know, get a figure of a character I don't have yet, and uh, this is General Worm Loathsum, a separatist. Uh, he appeared mostly in the Clone Wars movie. Um, you might remember him in the Battle of Christophsis. Um, pretty cool alien, like, I mean, I remember he annoyed me quite a bit in the film, but, you know, still good to have a separatist general. There's some, like, Dooku or Grievous in the collection, because we've got numerous figures of both of them, and... You know, it's great because I've been wanting to get this figure for a while and I was, when I saw I had enough just to get one more figure, I was like, you know, just see who I don't have. And a few stores had Clone Wars figures and Worm Loathsome was one I didn't have, so I just decided to purchase them there and then. Um, yeah, so I thought I would get the figures out of the way first of all because there's um, a lot of autographs to get through and I'll start off, of course, with the ones I actually did get London Film and Comic Con. I was going to shoot the pictured ones first, but I'll shoot this one first, um, because, <laughs> yeah, shameless plug-in, I guess, um, because it's one of our business cards, and um, this is actor Steve Coulter's autograph, he played Reg Monroe in The Walking Dead, now, you might be wondering, why did he autograph one of our business cards, um, so he was a guest on the podcast, uh, I want to say the last Saturday in May, I'm pretty sure it was, so, a couple of months ago, and, you know, he really enjoyed his time on the podcast, at least I hope he did, and, you know, I actually, you know, the thing is, you know, and I will preface this now by saying it, you're probably going to think I had a lot of money to spend at the convention, you know, with the haul um, that I'm going to show you, but it's not actually that at all, because I did have to budget myself seriously, um, and I will be honest, I had to keep it to what I bought be within £200, and... I will say that usually at conventions I like to at least have 300, at least for the big conventions, so, you know, just going to preface that, and I did confess that Steve's was one of the last names I had to take off the list, and he just decided to sign one of my business cards for free. He was going to sign the one I gave to him, gave to him the key, but I, luckily I stopped him and got him to sign another one, and um, yeah, it's always nice when, you know, people offer you free autographs, especially after you've interviewed them, intent, because... That's kind of what we're known for on the podcast interviewing, so, very cool. And as for the pictured ones, first of all, for someone I've been, want, been wanting to meet for a long time, Ray Park, who played Darth Maul in The Phantom Menace, and also some of his other roles you might know, like Toad and X-Men, Snake Eyes and G.I. Joe, but I'll always know him for Darth Maul. I've even made it a rule that I always... When I meet someone I know from multiple roles, I've got to get them on the first uh, role I knew, and 
I loved him. In, I really did like his character in X Men Toad in the first X Men film, but I just had to go for Darth Maul first. Um, so yeah, very happy to find the Ray Park in my collection. Next two, I won't go into too many details on in regard to why I don't feel like I met them at all, if you know what I mean. Um, because, you know, of how rushed it was. Um, not that I blame the convention or the guests themselves, but, you know, uh, sometimes how it happens. But, you know, I'll be more details because on the next uh, the next podcast, I'll actually be talking a lot about London Film and Car Con and my experiences there. But next up is Hayley Atwell, who plays Peggy Carter in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, I believe my first, the first Marvel guest I've ever met, actually. Or one of the first. I met a few at the convention, but certainly the first from the films. Of course, she has her own. She leads her own TV show now as well, which is just as cool. And um, next up is David Bradley, who I know better for likes of Harry Potter and Game of Thrones and his small role in Captain America and roles like that. But um, you know, the funny thing is, like I met him at the end of the one day he was attending Saturday, and he literally only had, he had a Kind of, I won't say a pile, but like a small pile of these images still the sign, but run out of every other picture he had, so like, uh, I couldn't get anything of a uh, picture of the rails I were known for, to be honest, I don't even know what this is from, so that tells you a lot. I think it's from Hot Fuzz, you know, but I haven't actually seen that, so yeah, not really much to say there, Um, the rest are all really good ones. Next up is David Barclay, who is was the Yoda puppeteer on The Empire Strikes Back. He was also one of the Jabba crew members for Return of the Jedi, so he had a couple of really important roles in Star Wars in the behind the scenes, and he's been one of the behind the scenes people I've been wanting to meet for a while, so great to get him on the Yoda image, especially as he included the uh, famous Yoda quote, do or do not, there is no try. Uh, next up, I got Ken Colley, who played Anwar Piet, and he's the only actor who, other than extras, uh, played the same Imperial officer in two films, which is pretty impressive. And we, Ken actually agreed to do an interview with us, which we recorded at the convention. So I'm looking forward to all of you being able to hear it because it was a really good interview. Ken was very interesting. Next up is Eric Bowersfeld. He was the voice of both Admiral Akbar and Bib Fortuna in Return of the Jedi. Um, surprisingly, he didn't really have, not that I'm blaming him, but there wasn't really a great selection of Akbar images. There was this one, which is pretty cool and unique in its own way, even though, no, I'm not 100% convinced about it, but the other two were like group shots, and as much as I like Bib Fortuna, um, you know, I just had to get him on an Akbar picture. I mean, come on, it's Akbar. And by group shots, I mean him and uh, numerous other Mon Calamari from the film. So, yeah, felt like I didn't have much of a choice, but so I got him on that one. And next up is Eileen Roberts. She played the White Masep, which is this one, in A New Hope, the first Star Wars film. It was only her second convention, I believe. She did the Star Wars fan fun day, which I went to a couple of years ago, so... Yeah, I think it was a uh, second convention. Um, next up, another behind-the-scenes person I've been wanting to meet for a while, Robert Watts, who was a producer on all three of the Star Wars original trilogy films, also uh, did important work on the first three Indiana Jones films as well. And this is him as a cameo. He had a small appearance as an ATSD driver in Return of the Jedi, one of the two that got thrown by um, Chewbacca, I think. And fun fact, the other ATSD driver that isn't actually pictured there, but on the same scene was played by Return of the Jedi director Richard Merkwind. So a bit of a fun fact for you if you didn't know that. Um, next up, and this one was pretty interesting because this is Tina Simmons who played a rebel technician. This was her first ever convention. And I, have to admit, I mean, I, I will confess I probably won't know where to find her in the film. Uh, and what you seen it was probably a big group meeting scene or something. Uh, but I have to admit, the image, this one, is what attracted to me. Um, I mean, how many, how many Mon Calamari has she decapitated or something there? It's a lot of, you know, Akbar heads um, and other various Akbar body parts. Um, next up, an actor I've been wanting to meet for a while, Ian Liston, who played Wes Jansen in Empire Strikes Back. Um, you know, really like the 
uh, half rebel pilots, I really like the rebel pilots in general, so I really should say, um, but yeah, very happy to have met him as well. Uh, another one, and this time a half rebel soldier I've been wanting to meet for a while, Jack McKenzie, who played Cal Alder. This is a very nice shot, in my opinion. Yeah, very nice. Um, yeah, so I was Jack McKenzie. Next up, Paul Giricho, I think I'm pronouncing that right, who played the AT-80 driver in Empire Strikes Back, another cool Imperial autograph to have. Very nice uh, shot as well, in my mind. Next up, and this is a really cool behind-the-scenes one, I have to say, from Star Wars. It's Bill Hargreaves. He built, like, he's one of the prop builders on both Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jelly. Built over 30, 40 props, I think. And, well, his most notable one is IG-88, the Bounty Hunter, but he did a lot of other ones as well. I can't remember them all, but I know there's a list out there. Some of those were, like, the uh, Jabba's Palace Dora in Return of the Jedi, the Snowspeeder Cannon in Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, IG-88 is the one he's most well-known for, and it's great because IG-88, I mean, you can tell he wasn't played by an actor because he's just kind of skinny. You don't think an actor would fit in there. So, yeah, he's like the only guy you could get uh, to sign IGAD images, I think. Yeah. The last two, and if, you, if you're not a Star Wars fan and are a bit sick of Star Wars autographs, that's fine, but there's more coming later from Necrobase Media Hall. But I did get two others as well that aren't Star Wars. First of all, Jamie Hill, who played the Foretold in the recent series of Doctor Who, and the episode he was in was one of my favourites of Series 8, so really happy to have met him. Yeah. Very nice. And lastly, another free autograph, actually, from a guest we had on the podcast just a few weeks ago, actually, I believe. A few weeks ago, I want to say, is Peter Shinkoda, who played Nobu in the Daredevil series. He was also one of the leads in another show you may know, Falling Skies. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I know him for Daredevil. I haven't actually started watching Falling Skies yet, but great to get him as well, and for free as well. It's actually interesting. One thing I noticed, um, most guests usually, um, when they sign an autograph, um, usually write uh, the person they're signing it to first, like to Rory in my case. Uh, Peter Shinkoda actually writes his name on top, and then the person he's signing it to underneath. I'm not sure if he did that just for me, or he does that for everyone, but um, it's interesting. Just for I point out that little thing. Um, and that's all of the London Film and Comic Con autographs. But now for the Echo Base Meteorographs, and I apologise if you're not a Star Wars fan, because the Echo Base Meteorographs are all Star Wars ones, but very exciting to me. Um, first of all, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm not the hugest autograph collector in the world compared to some people, I will preface, so I don't actually have that many multi pieces. But I do now. I've got almost the entire Star Wars Rebels cast, thanks to David and Echo Base Media. That, um, Vanessa Marshall, who voices Hera, is on it. Uh, Tia Serco voices Sabine. Taylor Gray voices Ezra. And Steve Bloomer voices Zeb. All four of them on there. Um, just need Freddy Prince Jr. as Kanan now, but... Now, that one will be a bit tricky to get, but I'm very happy, you know, just with the four I mentioned on it as well. And it's funny because Steve... Uh, even signs with uh, Zeb's signature line, Carabast, which is funny. Um, and Vanessa, who was one of our first ever guests on the podcast, episode 3, uh, I should say. Um, you know, even says, great podcast on it, you know. <laughs> nice compliment there, but yeah, really great. And like I said, I don't have too many multi-pieces, so, you know, it's a good one. It can be a bit unique in my collection, unless I start, um, you know, doing other multi-pieces. Uh, next up, and a couple of the next two are really big name voice actors. First of all, James Arnold Taylor the, as as Plo Koon in Star Wars: The Clone Wars, also with Plo, uh, also with Plo's signature line, Kotoya. Did I say that one? I think I said it right. <laughs> I hope I did anyway. But very cool. Um, and next up, Deep Bradley Baker as the voice of Jedi Master Sisi Tin in Star Wars: The Clone Wars, obviously most well known for the clones in the show, but still great just to get him on an image, and Saiso Tin is a pretty cool Jedi anyway, so I'm happy with it. Um, next up, and another really great one because it 
points out to my podcasting. Um, this is Chris Edgerly, the voice of Eef Koff in Star Wars The Clone Wars. Um, he's only in one episode of The Clone Wars, but interestingly, um, he actually voices in the ongoing How to Train Your Dragon TV show. So um, he actually leaves a nice long message, which includes, you know, saying that I'm a great podcaster, and it just gets me thinking that. You know, I have in I interviewed him twice on a cup on the Star Wars podcast I used to do, and I'm thinking now I definitely need to bring him back on Everything Geek, the one we're currently doing, and what this is all about. So, yeah, definitely, definitely another reason to and bring him back. So, we'll have to contact him soon, I guess, as a hint for a potential upcoming guest, I guess. Um, next up, another Clone Wars one, Blair Best, the voice of Evan Peel in the Clone Wars. I think you can sense a theme. I've got a lot of Jedi autographs going on here. And actually, the next two are Jedi as well from the Clone Wars. Next up, Olivia Diabo, the voice of Luminara Unduli in the Clone Wars. Very nice. Um, and another Jedi, this time a Padawan. Olivia Hack, the voice of Katuni in Star Wars The Clone Wars. So, yeah, some really great. Um, you know, Jedi Order Grass to add to my collection, very happy with all of those. Um, actually, next one is a Jedi as well, but not from the Clone Wars. Technically, that's actually not true, because this is the Clone Wars, just it's not the Clone Wars, that one, it's the Clone Wars Micro Series, which came before it. This is actress Tatiana Yusukovic, I think I'm saying her second name right, who was the voice of Barris Offi in the Clone Wars Micro Series, released between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. So, my first my Clone Wars Micro Series autograph, that's great to have uh, one from the Micro Series in my collection. And lastly, and one of the guests was actually at London Film and Comic Con, but I didn't meet because I knew David had got me an autograph from her, is Keisha Castle Hughes, who Queen Apailana, in Revenge of the Sith. So, yeah, great to get another Revenge of the Sith autograph in my collection. So, yeah, as you can tell, a pretty big haul. I don't even want to count how many autographs I've added to my collection. Um, I didn't miss out on any at London Film and Comic Con, I think. No, I didn't. Um, I mean, I, as I said already, I did have to budget quite a bit, and to be honest, I was surprised, you know, coming out of the event that I even was still able to get so much. I mean, you know, um, it's just crazy. And then... Coming back to finding David's package from Mega Race Media and even more autographs, especially with the Rebels multi-piece. It's just crazy. I didn't expect that to happen, that's for sure. Um, yeah, that's my whole video from London Film and Comic Con and uh, Echo Base Media as well. So, should be more whole videos coming soon because I still have a few more conventions coming.